Hey everyone, today we're here with our senior tech Tim at ACES EFI and we're going to go over some of the key software um, applications that we have for our online software and you can use that to do things like create boost tables mm -hmm. and do a bunch of other cool things. So we just wanted to kind of give a little bit of insight of how that even works. So Tim, what do we do? How do we get started here? Well, one good thing to start off with is um, you got to make a base tune. The one that's coming out is gonna be dynamite. <laughs> so we go in here, we're gonna make a base tune, just go through where it's gonna, yeah, it's a 5.3 truck motor, 24X, so let's see, stock cam. Yes, yes, yes. I want boost, that's all I want. Let's yes. save it, let's do a thing. Absolutely, key off. Key on. That's my power station, by the way, it's fantastic. <laughs> so anywho, now we got a tune in here, we're, we're doing great. So now we want to scale it for boost because we got the finest of turbos to put on our shop truck. Absolutely. Plug in the hand cable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe. It usually works when you plug it in. It it's, does work it, if you plug it in. So, I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, on the can cables, check it out. We got a blue light and a blue light. Blue light indicates it's plugged in to an active USB, good to go. This one indicates it's plugged into the ECU. It's powered up, that's powered up. Perfect. We're in business. So, next thing we do, over here to the tuning software, we pick what we got. Jackpot. Literally, jackpot. Does that work with both the drive-by cable and drive-by wire applications? Drive-by cable, drive-by wire, trans control, or not of any of it. Awesome. So I, it's I like it a lot. This this stuff is pretty. Uh, I don't know if you work with other tuning software, it all gets very very familiar very quick. So we got the tuning software up. The ECU is plugged in. We're communicating through CAN USB. Perfect. Hit the little link in the top. It'll do a thing. I know I have old software, so I'll click yes. So why did they click that link at the top? Well, that actually helps the ECU to communicate with the actual PC itself. Mm. So that brings it in and does CAN communication. You see this blinking red light right here mm -hmm. indicating it's actually transferring data. It's talking to it right now. Perfect. Okay. So for scaling boost, fuel injector icon. Now when you link to this and actually link up here, it brings the tune from the ECU itself. Really? To scale for boost, this is super easy. We go to map X point, click that. So you see right here, this is in KPA, so nothing crazy. From 10 to 100 is where the atmosphere is that we live in. 100 being the atmosphere that we breathe. So one bar or 100 KPA. We're gonna go to 300. Too easy, right? See the spike right here? Mm -hmm. But we need to interpolate between our base value here of 10, mm -hmm. which is hard into the vacuum, up to our boosted area of 300. So let me do this correctly. Right click, fill column values. Whoa, <laughs> that's so cool. It's really not bad. So we did that for map point. Okay. That's like our fuel maps. Um, the so like fuel correction, for instance, is going to be the same thing. Mm -hmm. Anywhere where there is a map value, we need to go in here and scale it. Okay. So at some point, we'll have a really easy button for this. So all you have to do is say boosted, yes. <laughs> map sensor, this one. Perfect. Makes that easy. Mm -hmm. Let's see. AFR map, same thing. It's a map value. We need to change it accordingly. And there's only a couple to change, but it's not... It's not anything too crazy to do. It's just a little bit of interpolation. Gotcha. So, let's see, fuel correction, map correction, not mm -hmm. a problem. We just need to make sure that all, everything with a map, like learn map. Mm -hmm. So if you don't scale this accordingly, whenever it starts to learn, it is not going to learn the values that's outside of it. So to learn all the, all the uh, anything in atmosphere, but nothing under boost. So same thing. Boom, interpolates. Perfect. We cruise over to the spark table because, well, sparks want to have a map value as well. Okay. So we cruise through here, and there it is, map X point. Perfect. Same thing, 300. Because we're using a three bar mm -hmm. map sensor, so 300 kPa. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, so if you used to do this in PSI, if it was an emperor, for instance, mm -hmm. it, would, it would be 43.5 PSI. 
it's what it'd be running to. The force fourteen point five or so would be atmosphere, really? and then the next because we'll be doing like twenty eight pounds of boost. Okay, because that's what we're ready to do. Cool. Let's see here. Yeah, that's uh, that's essentially going to be all of it. There's there's idle RPM points and all that jazz. But none of that stuff is actually going to matter mm -hmm. because we're not going to be. It's not in a boosted table. Right. Anything that's going to see boost needs to be appropriately adjusted to to see. Got you. What that that three bar maps is just. So be. from here, when we get everything put together or put in uh, for our map sensor, mm -hmm. um, what does the customer do as far as? When can I start my car? You know, we've got everything put into mm -hmm. the system. When do I get to try it out? So that's that's not too bad. Um, after we scaled everything, what we need to do is actually upload it to the ECU. Okay. We're, we're live with it right now. Mm -hmm. The only thing I have to do is go under here, say for instance, we'll go to fuel. Okay. Download calibration data. Click. Really? You can see a little progress bar down here. It's communicating over here. Really? And that's it? That's it for <laughs> fuel. So each individual configuration you mm -hmm. need to kind of go through and just re upload. Spark, etc. And just wow. upload that. So okay. if we're doing a if we're doing a tune mm -hmm. and we're sitting there, oh my, my learning table is putting in 20, 20 points of fuel here. Yeah. If we really wanted to, if we was going to go for like an open loop tune and get rid of the O2 sensors and put the hater pipes on because we're, we're fixing to go hit the quarter mile up, you know? <laughs> yes. Um, you can do an open loop tune, disconnect the O2 sensors, do all that good stuff. Or if you want to keep it in closed loop but still mm -hmm. have all the boost and everything, you just leave all that stuff alone. Okay. So you, want, you let the learning map do its job and just leave it alone because it's basically a fuel modifier. It says, hey, I put in 20% of fuel here. Okay. And it just leaves it there. It doesn't clear it out unless you tell it to. Okay. So. Awesome. Same thing with, a, with like, um, for instance, with scaling. Now if we cruise over here to, um, we selected a stock cam, so stock VE. Mm. If we look at our tables, you know, 450 RPMs, which mm. is running RPMs all the way up to 7,000. Okay. From 10, which is a vacuum, pretty hard vacuum, all the way up to 300. Right. This is what our VE table's doing. So, gotcha. you know, like my stuff right here, you know, 107 VE, mm -hmm. 107. Mm -hmm. You can actually select and interpolate the entire table between the values if you wanted to. So we can go in here and fill selected values and it, it kind of, it strokes Whoa. everything to, to take it all the way over that direction. So. That's really From cool. this point to that point, it actually has filled the values in it and evened it out. So even if you look at the graph, you can see that it just kind of interpolated no the entire way. table. So if you need a good base map for doing this, you know, you're like, okay, cool, I need I need more fuel, I know, because I'll be boosted. Mm -hmm. So then you can just make a nice smooth ramp up. It's easier to walk up this slope than try to climb mountains to get to it. You know uh, what I'm saying? Okay, cool. So and yes, this software does have a graph feature like that. A lot of people believe that it doesn't. Mm -hmm. It's literally down here at the bottom corner. Wow. So that's super simple. <laughs> it's really not that's that. That's really it? easy. I mean, I, I do these tech calls a lot with folks that are, you mm -hmm. know, they've got the the finest turbos off the internet, and they're or putting bad. in their five three truck motor. Just right. you know, like I do, like my one ton out in the parking lot, sure. you know, because it's it's awesome, right? Mm -hmm. But. It's, it's just that easy. It's, you scale it, you, you throw in the fuel in, you think you're going to need, and then you just go through there. If you're set, if you're actually tuning it using the learning tables, mm -hmm. learning table one's the left bank, driver's side, okay. because it controls everything on the left bank. Learning table two is what is learned on the right bank. On the wow. Side. So if you see that okay. put in you know 20% of fuel here, mm -hmm. you can go back to your table, and roughly in this RPM, in this area of the map, you can mm -hmm. go back, highlight this certain area, right click offset selected and say I need 20% of fuel to zero percent all right click Boop. 20% wow so we've modified this for 20% That's so cool so we know we needed to make the change we can go in here and so we made modified the fuel table mm -hmm. I wanted to learn more and, and do a better job that's actually Windows Security that does that okay way. it's not the software <laughs> so we can go in here right click clear the table so it's going to have to relearn stuff mm -hmm. but it will learn less in that area because you've already modified the fuel table to be what it's supposed to be, to be more like what it's supposed to be wow that's so cool it's really not bad that's not bad at all so same thing with this you'll go in here you'll clear that out you go for a test drive you get it under boost you do the thing and make sure your change is held true 
and if it's within about five percent, I mean you're pretty dialed in. That's at, that, awesome. at that point, you you've tuned it to work great off the base map. So mm -hmm. if you're not using O2 sensors, you can go that route with it. If you are, you can go that route with it because it's just not going to be learning as much anymore. I it's not going to have to say like, hey, I need to modify by twenty percent. I need to modify by like two percent okay. or something like that. Another thing I need to explain to you that's yeah. actually important to the map sensor itself. Like, right. Hey, there's there's some techno stuff going on here. You know, I know we scaled it from about ten to three hundred, and we just did that to show how to scale. It. Right. It's not really the value you need to go off of because if you go to sensors, like the map sensor we're using, which mm -hmm. you know, see the calibration type right here on the uh, screen, right. is a coefficient point A to point B. That's a linear coefficient sure. value, et cetera, et cetera, math stuff. Mm -hmm. So if we, had a, if we had a custom sensor, say you were using like a GM1 bar, mm -hmm. and you actually knew what the information was, so mm -hmm. like right here, our custom three bar map sensor, it's 3218 coefficient A and a negative 62,908. Perfect. We've got a map calculator in our software. Wow. So if you knew the voltage point to point, and you knew 20 to 300 is going to be from point A to point B, mm -hmm. you can go in here, input that data, calculate appropriately, and you see that this is actually one digit off. Okay, so it's it's a 3217 coefficient, which you know I accidentally put in 3218, mm -hmm. but this is actually going to help the mm, sorry the ECU itself understand what the coefficient values is and how it's scaled appropriately so really right so i know i know it's a bit much but at least we showed the scaling mm -hmm. explained that a little bit but this is actually like we're going to go through and do a proper scaling of it would have to go 22 300 mm -hmm. because that's what our coefficient values are going to be in mm -hmm. the system brother absolutely so with that what else do you want to know about this software that you get questions about or you see on social media that I mean, I know what I get a lot, which is boost stuff. Sure. I'll get a tech call, hey man, how you doing? Uh, I, you know, I've got a twin turbo 5.3 stock intake, stock heads, big cam. Uh, how do I scale it for boost? I'm like, well, it's gonna run real weird, but I'll tell you how to scale it. Yeah. It's easy as that. Gotcha. And a lot of the, and getting to, I mean, there's hours, hours and hours of stuff we can talk about. For when sure. When it comes to tuning software. Absolutely. I think, I think the biggest thing that would come from a customer service side and a lot of people have questions about mm -hmm. is what makes our software different from HP Tuning or stuff that our, comp that our competitors would have. We talked about it briefly earlier, but is it harder to switch to something like this? Is it, more, is it easier to switch to something like this? And why switch to this when they have experience with other things? It's that right there is a one flavor versus the next thing. If you're okay. an HP tuner's super tuner mm -hmm. and you've done all the classes, you've been working with it from like day one, mm -hmm. back when, um, back like right after you was burning chips and stuff like that to make tunes different and okay. working through hexadecimal tables. See, HP tuner still works with all that hexadecimal business. It's just they made a really lovely graphic user interface mm -hmm. so that you can see a thing and see the definition of it and see what the change. And if you know what all this stuff does, you get a fantastic tune and just on a stock ECU. Our stuff, we've pretty much trimmed all the fat on. It's like, mm -hmm. here's your fuel tables, here's a parameter to change to make this different, mm -hmm. here's a parameter to change to make that different. And the same thing with our competitors. They've, they spent pretty good money and they have fantastic software. It's not an issue. It, they, they, they made a very beautiful graphic user interface. Mm -hmm. But at the heart of it, it all kind of does the same thing. You're modifying a certain amount of timing mm -hmm. or fuel or a parameter or a sensor or something like that. You're all doing the same thing. It's just that, you know, we have great software that does that. And if we wanted to add stuff into it, it's mm -hmm. not really a massive deal for us because our master software which this is you know this is the most user-friendly version of it mm -hmm. that you know that you can't change too many things and just off one parameter to make such a difference yeah. it's going to just destroy everything yeah whereas the bigger software can um but like as we expand our systems like we'll expand our software and it's not going to be a huge cost to us yeah. because we have all the capabilities we just need to make sure to put the correct things in versus having to re-engineer all kinds of user interfaces mm -hmm. and, and just rethink how everything works. We just have great software that does exactly what we need to do based off our target audience as it goes yeah. and what systems we're putting together. That's cool. If you've got some 10,000 horsepower alcohol machine sitting yeah. on big old slick Mickeys, that's, this is not the software for you most likely. No. I mean, I'd, I'd love to see it. i got to be honest. <laughs> I'd love to see it. That would be you awesome. Know? So, I mean, this, 
it's really good because there's other companies that have very basic software that's harder to use than ours, and mm-hmm. there's some companies that have fantastic software that's easier, but in the same way, it also comes well, at a higher price. Uh, oh, yeah, for sure. So we're trying to keep the price point low by investing and, and trying to really refine all the systems we got. Sure, and, and how much does our software cost? Our software, oh, mm, it's the right price, it's free. Love that. No, love <laughs> so, that. Love that. Well, I mean, you know, you have to buy a link cable depending on which system you got. And sometimes mm-hmm. we have specials. Yeah. You know, so I it's like, you, you know, get, buy a kill yeah. shot, get a thing mm-hmm. kind of deal. Absolutely. Um, the, uh, but if you got to buy a jackpot, for instance, like this EC right mm-hmm. here, if you buy a jackpot, it, it comes, comes with, with the cable. Yeah, absolutely. So you can set up a base tune with a handheld. That's cool. <laughs> or you can set up a basic tune and then jump into the CAN bus open up the software, upload mm-hmm. it, adjust whatever you want, up, uh, download it to the ECU, mm-hmm. go for a drive, start your tuning process, feel mm-hmm. real good. Because just like me, like my camper, for instance, mm-hmm. you know, because that old school YouTube stuff I was doing for you, well, not even for you guys, I was doing it for myself. And just, sure. you know, I just happened to like the, the stuff you guys were sending me. But there's nothing more rewarding than when you were cruising around in a 1978 camper, your laptop tuning the thing. <laughs> You know, you know it's, <laughs> and it's nothing like what other people would see when they're coming down the road and they're like, what is he doing? In yeah, this? I'm driving around with this thing over here <laughs> doing a fuel table at the same time. Oh, and, that's awesome. You know, I'm, I'm gapping Honda Odysseys on the road, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so. It are, is what it is. Should have let the golf clubs at the house and might have a chance. That. Love that. Well, Tim, thank you very much oh, for, yeah. for having the, taking the time to do this with us and, uh, Show us a little bit around the ACES fuel injection uh, tuning software. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm really excited to get to work with you a little bit more and, and, and do showcases on our on our products and software and other things that come out, like like even this new 7-inch handheld that's coming out very, very soon. Yeah, this, uh, is, this is actually fantastic. I'm quite a fan of this. I know this is like a prototype. Yes. But it's yeah, huge. I'm, I'm probably just going to keep that. Well. Okay. <laughs> if you have more questions or want to just check out some more stuff, uh, Tim has a YouTube channel, Action Vulture. He's got a bunch of really cool stuff out there. A lot of Aces products there um, and can give some advice, give some um, basic tuning, basic... Mm-hmm. I think you even took apart a kill shot at one point. Don't do that. Yeah, it kind of, it kind of avoids you. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> so... <laughs> But if you have any questions about that, if you want to check out some really cool stuff, uh, check out Tim and Action Vulture, and uh, we'll see you guys very soon. Bye. (laughs) See you now.